in today's battle we are facing dogger awesome dog and this right here was definitely a pretty high quality battle and for those that have been struggling with legendary teams um now truth is if you can't beat him you join him but if you didn't want to do that you know this this right here seems to be one of the most effective ways of you know dealing with it so anyways i looked at this dude's team and i realized my man does not have a way to shut down my entry hazard so i'm gonna really want to capitalize off of that which is why i'm going to go into Rebombi here because sticky web is going to take me the distance and shutting down a lot of these pokemon so anyways though one fatal mistake i made at the start of this battle was running the choice specs instead of the choice scarf I swear, I literally wanted to change that out, but I forgot, and um, I don't know if I forgot, I think I might have done it and not saved, because I know for sure I got a choice card, but um, I just, I haven't switched it out, and that is detrimental here, because if I had the choice card, I would just go for Bug Buzz and finish this Deoxys right here, right now, but unfortunately I can't do that, which is why I want to go into Cresselia. Now I was expecting him to go for Fire Punch, but he goes for Flash Cannon instead, which is um, also fine, it's not too big a deal. I mean, Cresselia is bulky on both sides of the spectrum. So I'm gonna fire off a T-Wave here on this Deoxys. He's gonna go for a Dark Pulse, which is gonna do a lot of damage, and unfortunately, that's actually gonna give me the flinch. So I'm not gonna be able to administer the paralysis, and that is gonna put me in a bad situation, because uh, now I, I really don't know how I'm gonna deal with this. I mean, you gotta consider, Deoxys is 150 across the board. Now, this was Deoxys um, attack form, this would be especially dangerous, but luckily that's not going to be the case here. But still, nonetheless, this is a problem, and I'm going to have to figure out how I want to deal with this. So, um, I'm thinking about Gastrodon, because, I mean, Gastrodon could come in here on a, a Dark Pulse, since I have given it some especially defensive investment. And I got Gastrodon in here because um, I wanted the most effective Kyoker counter, because, I mean, Cradley, as good as it is, still actually takes super effective damage from Ice Beam. So, um, Gastrodon is going to have Storm Drain and um, is going to be taking neutral damage from Ice Beam. So, I mean, it's not the ultimate check because it's not like he can do anything back to Kyogre, but it's going to be a sufficient enough answer. So, anyways, now I'm looking at Kinkelder and I'm thinking this could actually be a good chance to um, get my Flame Orb activation. And he's probably going to go for round 2 of Dark Pulse. I don't see the reason for him to go for anything else. So, you know, I should be able to actually pivot around here. And my plan also, partly, is um, I'm going to switch into either Excadrill or Cresselia on the incoming Psycho Boost. I mean, you really got to be smart with it. I know for sure this guy is 150% running Psycho Boost. No one's going to be running a competitive Deoxys without running its best stab option. And, you know, he's definitely gonna try and take his opportunity here to take out Kinkelder which could do serious damage to his Tyranitar and maybe other Pokemon um, in the right circumstances so Excadrill is gonna come out here and um, you know it's it's not gonna be the bulkiest I mean I would if I was running Assault Vest I definitely would have been able to handle this Psycho boost a lot better but you know I still took in the attack pretty good and in addition we are getting some juicy life orb damage on this deoxys right here so anyways now i'm taking well i took in that cycle boost as predicted and now his attack stats have been significantly decreased so perhaps cresselia could come in here if he tries to go for round two of cycle boost or maybe even a different attack i'm not too sure what he's planning but he actually ends up going into salamence here probably expecting an earthquake but luckily um i'm able to actually get cresselia in here and that's going to be really sweet. Now, truth be told, I actually think if he wanted to, he could actually finish a job with um, a return or even a double edge if he has enough investment into his Salamence. But he actually ends up switching out here into Reggie Aleki, giving me the vital opportunity to go for a Moonlight. That was definitely his biggest mistake because um, Cresselia is one of my defensive backbones. It's basically essential for this team to function at a, you know an effective level so if he took it out i would definitely be in trouble and probably have to start sacrificing pokemon if i wanted to be able to you know have a chance against this guy's legendary team so anyways here on the regieleki i want to go into tundras 
because, I mean, Regieleki is kind of useless um, if it can't use its electric type attacks. And I have Walt Absorb on this, and I have two other ground type Pokemon, so this is going to be the least of my problems. I mean, it's going to be completely neutralized here. And I was thinking, really, if I could get that Sticky Web support up, this Thunderous will be monstrous. Because, I mean, I mean, I guess Tyranitar, you know, could try and come in, but, I mean, it's not going to take in a Focus Blast from Thunderous. But it's 145 Special Attack boosted by Life Orb, and that Focus Blast, granted, is also... 120 base power, so I mean it's not gonna want to have to eat any of those up and um, You know with the sticky web. I mean Tundra should be able to clean true and actually leave a massive hole in this guy's team And I even have the right coverage with hidden power ice to hit Rayquaza and Salamence So really it's it's the optimal setup right there So I'm going to go for a sticky web here on the Tyranitar. He's actually gonna fire off a stone edge Which is gonna finish the job now, you might say, why would you try sticky webbing in the face of Tyranitar? I mean, really though, I just wanted to bring it in because I could see the Wayu that would be behind getting sticky web up. And I wanted that in as early as I could get it. I mean, I was guaranteed to get it there. So, you know, I wanted to go for it. I, and I mean, granted, he could also miss his stone edge. So, you know, I might actually, you know, get some value out of it. But um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. But still, I mean, I'm not disappointed with that outcome. I got what I needed, I got what I came for, and now he is going to be in trouble because my um, Pokemon will be able to outspeed his, and even Excadrill might get an opportunity to Sword Stance and Sweep. So anyways though, you might have seen that I went for Facade in Conkeldur because I was thinking he's probably going to switch out, and he actually, this guy is definitely uh, a smarter end opponent, he was actually able to predict that and stay in and go for the, um, it looks like a Stone Edge, I actually forgot what he went for, which is fine though because I mean I do have Mach Punch and basically we have brought the um, Tyranitar low enough to where, you know, Tundurus could even just finish with a Vault Switch or a T-Ball because ideally it's not fun to try, you know, staying in on Tyranitar, I mean, I mean well I'm or not, not staying in, I mean, try, if, if you miss a move on Tyranitar, then you know, especially with Thunderous, it's going to take heavy damage. In fact, it's probably going to get one-shotted from Stone Edge. And Focus Blast is a lower accuracy attack, which is why, you know, getting it in range of Wall Switch is actually better. Now, you will actually take more Life Orb damage from going for two Wall Switches, but, you know, it's definitely worth it because um, you'll, you'll be able to maintain momentum and it's guaranteed to you. So anyways, on this Salamence, um, I figured he was probably going to want to try going for a Dragon Dance on my Kinkelder. And I don't want to have to stay in and go for a Mock Punch because I could actually probably bring it in as a sacrifice later if I want to maintain momentum. So here I'm going to go for the uh, T-Wave. Luckily, we do successfully administer it. And this Salamence is going to be neutralized to great extent. So um, now I've got to figure out what I want to do. The ideal move would actually be to go into Cresselia and actually go for a Moonlight, but actually I'm thinking, well, if I can, I actually want to get Thunderous in here so I can finish the job with a Hidden Power Rise because I was certain that would be able to one-shot. Now this guy actually goes for a Dragon Dance, which is really, really dangerous because um, with a not Dragon Dance, he's actually going to be able to get his speed back. Like The Paralysis was meant to be speed control, but that can actually be shut down if he gets enough Dragon Dances. And, uh, with, you know, with his attack stat too high, this, this Salamence could be a monster. So, luckily, we are able to outspeed it even after the, uh, plus two, paral or the plus two, um, speed boost. And that's probably because this game's functioning on the Gen 6 paralysis mechanics rather than the Gen 7. Because, um, I'm pretty sure, like, in Gen 6, you get 25% of your original speed if you get paralyzed. Whereas in Gen 7, you you get to keep 50%, which is a lot more better. So, you know, that stat, um, we are able to take out that uh, problem. So now he actually brings in Kyogre, and um, you might think, why don't you go for a T-Balt here? Or maybe even a Walt Switch. So here's the thing with T-Balt. If I go for T-Balt, it's most likely not going to KO, because, I mean, Kyogre has like 140 base special defense it's uh, somewhere around the area 90 hp so it's actually a really good special tank as much as it is a really good special attacker now if i had thunder i'd actually be able to capitalize off that and i might have considered it but um that was definitely not worth it and why i didn't go for wall switch it's because um i really really want to maintain 
um, as much HP on Tundras as I can because um, I know for sure that Tundras will actually be able to tear through the rest of this guy's team. It's going to outspeed and destroy everything else like Regieleki, Deoxys, um, even Rayquaza to some extent with Hidden Power Eyes. But um, if I go too low in HP from all that Life Orb recoil, Rayquaza actually does have a chance of instantly knocking me out with Outrage if he has that or you know even maybe even extreme speed I, I mean in simple terms I wanted to play as safely as I can by maintaining my turn to risk because I know it's going to be a really high value Pokemon in this battle thanks to the sticky web so you know that's that so anyways this guy has never seen the Gastrodon before so um, you can see that all his his moves are being foiled even after the calm mind and that's that's really good to see because I mean Kyogre is insanely insanely good so you know you want to you want to see counters every now and then I mean truth be told this is not the ultimate counter like all he has to do is run hidden power grass with calm mind now no one is actually going to do that because um if you're doing that you're going to miss out on some other valuable coverage that you might need because if you lose t-balls or thunder then grass types are going to be or not grass types um other water types should be able to shut you down and um if you lose ice beam then you know that's going to have its implications too like grass type pokemon should be able to shut you down so um i mean i guess i guess in a power grass would actually um work well as a replacement for tundra but i mean not many people are going to be running it because it also just doesn't have as much power so it's very niche for pokemon like gastrodon and swampert and not always do you see pokemon like gastrodon and swampert you know brought in so anyways um, on that last turn that um, I did unfortunately miss, I went for the recover um, because I knew he was going to attack and um, I wanted to maximize my HP because he was going to die to toxic damage the next turn anyways. So um, right here he goes into the Griselia, probably the most scary Pokemon that this guy has on his team right now because with Dragon Dance it probably will have the output to clean and um, I don't think that's even avoidable. Like maybe if I saved for Bombi and it was Choice Scarf, it would have been an answer, but that's not the case. And, um, you know, I basically be, will be screwed, especially since Cresselia isn't at full HP like I would have liked it to be. So anyways, here on the Rayquaza, I'm going to bring in Cresselia because, I mean, I want to try and force it to attack. I don't want to be set up fodder for Dragon Dance and uh, whatever other antics this guy has on his sleeve. And anyways, he actually goes for Fly. Um, I'm not sure why he's using this while he has Dragon Ascent. Definitely not the smartest competitive decision. I mean, this guy does have pretty unique coverage for his Pokemon, which actually have turned out to be really useful here. But this one, this option is probably not the best one in my opinion. So anyways, here after the paralysis has been administered, I'm going to take this opportunity to heal up because I want Cresselia to be in peak condition in case it's needed for, you know, future matchups so um you know that's that and now I, I can actually start firing off moon blast which shouldn't do massive damage because i mean chrysalia isn't meant to be an offensive machine it's meant to be a wall but you know that's definitely going to suffice because i mean two more of those and rayquaza will no longer be my problem so he's actually going to take this opportunity to start setting up his dragon dance um i'm not entirely sure if that's the best move because um i mean he's already paralyzed so I don't think he's realistically going to be getting much value out of that. Unless he tries to go for extreme speed. But, um, you know, I'm not too worried about that doing too much damage. So he's going to go for another round of Dragon Dance here. I'm thinking um, this might be enough to outspeed. I mean, I wasn't too sure. Once again, this is Gen 6 or Gen 7 mechanics. But I'm pretty sure these are the uh, Gen 6 paralyzed mechanics where it's 25%. So that's probably why I'm able to outspeed the Rayquaza right here. And finish the job with a side shock so now he's gonna bring out his deoxys and um i mean truth be told i'm actually not too worried about this deoxys because um chrysalia is gonna be able to i mean chrysalia has done its job i mean all he has left now is the regieleki and deoxys so i mean i could i could really do whatever i want to because thunderish should win this game but anyways i'm gonna stay in and just you know get some damage here i'm gonna go for the moon blast I could have gone for Psy Shock, but I mean, I think both of them would have had equal effect here. I could even paralyze him, but I didn't think that was necessary. Like, I'm just trying to get this job finished now because, I mean, basically, he's kind of helpless against the rest of my team. So anyways, though, I mean, I do get the special attack drop 
And um, I'm thinking because this guy is life work, I could actually try pivoting in X control if I want to try and maintain a clean sheet here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. X control is going to come in here on the dark pulse. And um, he's actually going to faint to his own life orb damage, which is going to be really sweet. So um, we do activate Mole Breaker, which isn't going to really do anything here. I mean, I guess it, it, it's just it's not going to be useful in this situation. But I mean, I do actually like the ability because I mean, being able to, you know, shut down Rotom is really, really nice. So anyways, here he brings in his final Pokemon, the Regia Aleki. And once again, I am mildly concerned by this. It's not even that bad. I mean, really, I could have just stayed in and gone for Earthquake, but I'm trying to keep a clean sheet here, which is why Thunderous is going to come out here. And I'm actually kind of also scouting in some in some ways. So he's actually going to fire off a Hyper Beam. I did not expect that at all. But that does massive damage here to Thunderous, although he's going to have to recharge here. So I'm tempted to go for a Focus Blast, because I'm pretty sure that will one-shot. But I'm going to go for a Wall Switch, and we do actually outspeed... It's not really a full surprise though at the same time because I mean this is base one, 101 speed so it's still really fast but um, I was still actually expecting Richie Lucky to have speed because I know it has something insane like it's base 200 something or I think it's just 200 so you know it's not something you really want to mess with. So Cresselia is going to come in here on the um, Reggie Lucky and um, I know for sure he's probably not going to go for electric move but Thunder is here so I'm just going to finish the job after he goes for a hyper beam so that right there is gg that was a great game